One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and we are back on the series on the channel where we rank the top five best Jaguar draft picks of each round, and today we are on the third round, ladies and gentlemen. This one does not have as many legendary Jaguars, but it does have some players that you might have forgotten about and some players that did ball out for the Jacksonville Jaguars during their time in Duval County, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is the top five best third round draft picks in Jacksonville Jaguar history. Number five, wide receiver, Mike Sims Walker. This was a guy that was supposed to explode for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was the number one wide receiver in Jacksonville for about three to four years and was a guy that all Jags fans expected to be the number one guy and to be the guy that gets Jacksonville out of its wide receiver funk. It's not just now that the Jags haven't had any really elite wide receivers. It's been an ongoing theme since about for the last 10 years, I'd have to say that the Jaguars have not really had a true number one wide receiver. We haven't had a true number one wide receiver at a consistent level since Jimmy Smith. Now, Allen Robinson could have been that guy. However, he did tear his ACL and the Jaguars did not want to risk him doing that again. So they let Allen Robinson walk and he ended up being a tremendous, tremendous addition to the Chicago Bears, which still keeps the Jags up at night, I'm sure, because we extended Marquise Lee. And Marquise Lee ended up ending up with a season-ending injury, and he is still rehabbing it right now. So the Jags were really expecting a lot out of Mike Sims Walker right out of the gate, but some injury problems with him as well as not necessarily performing to the level that we expected him to <clears throat> in seasons after his rookie and second year where he flat out dominated and was the number one go-to guy. He was never a over a thousand yard receiving guy, but he was a guy that the Jaguars really were hoping to rely on to be that guy, to be the number one target for David Garrard, to really develop him, to bring him through and be the next franchise quarterback with the Jags. But unfortunately, David Garrard's career was littered with not good wide receiving options. And Mike Sims Walker was his number one wide receiver for a long, long time. And though he's not going to go down in Jacksonville history as one of the best to ever do it he is one of the top five best third round draft picks in jaguar history so that has to count for something he was a guy that was supposed to take over for us and he was a guy that was supposed to be a big big addition unfortunately he just was not enough to put the jags over the hump number four pot roast terrence knighton terrence knighton was never necessarily a big part of the Jacksonville Jaguars. In fact, in his four years here, he only ranked up 12 sacks and I believe only 15 tackles for a loss. He wasn't necessarily a game changer for us. He was pretty stout in the run game. He was a big boy and good to have in the middle for some run defense, that's for sure. But Terrence Knighton really didn't find his stride in the NFL until he left the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that's why I didn't have him ranked any higher than number four because he didn't perform necessarily at the level that he performed at in Denver and even a little bit in Washington that he performed in Jacksonville. He just didn't do it. He was more well known for that Denver team because he ended up winning a Super Bowl, so that's good on him. He's one of the few Jaguar draft picks that do have a Super Bowl ring, so a big congratulations to Terrence Knighton on that. I wish he could have been uh, a Jaguar and got a Super Bowl ring, but unfortunately that's just not the way she goes, but that's the way she went for Terrence Knighton. And again, he did have a pretty good NFL career. Unfortunately, just most of his best career best of his career didn't come in Jacksonville. It came later on. So that's why he doesn't rank very high on this list, but he's going to rank higher than Mike Sims Walker because he managed to find his stride somewhere else and to dominate and to play at his full potential. But again, he just was not that guy for Jacksonville, so I could not rank him very high. And he's also lucky that the Jags have not really hit on a lot of third round draft picks. So he comes in at number four of the best third round pick in Jacksonville Jaguar history. Number three, center, Brandon Linder. Brandon Linder was a part of one of the more recent Jaguar draft class, and he was one of the most recent late round draft picks that the Jaguars had that have hit. And like I said in my second round draft pick video, we can't really praise Dave Caldwell on his first round selections, which seems like the most easy selection to hit on because you have all these first round talents. 
But unfortunately, he just hasn't hit on those. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, undrafted. Dave Caldwell has hit the nail on the head with a lot of these picks. By sanding Brandon Linder, we ended up making him the highest paid center in the league until uh, the Steelers recently just paid the Castro uh, more than Brandon Linder. Linder also got hurt this season, which was unfortunate. But he was part of that Jaguar 2017 offensive line that only allowed 24 sacks, which is an all-time franchise record. And he was an anchor of that offensive line. He's also a leader. You look at any of the Jags wired tape and you see Brandon Linder's the guy that is out there hoo and and making sure that everybody's in the right mind, making sure everybody is ready to play football. And, you know, Brandon Linder, he's a great guy. And, you know, his Instagram is such worth a follow. I don't know if y'all seen his side flip that he did into the uh, into the river. That shit was hilarious. But Brandon Linder, a great guy, a great center, and a great uh, leader, solid piece to this offensive line, a team captain, and a guy that's going to be with the Jaguars, hopefully, until he calls it a career because this guy has true, true potential to be one of the best Jaguar offensive linemen of all time. Obviously, that bar has been set pretty high by Tony Pacelli, and he probably won't end up being better than Tony Pacelli, but he has a chance to be one of the best offensive linemen in Jaguar history because he is that damn good if he can stay on the field and stay healthy. I'm hoping for an all-healthy year for Brandon Linder so he can show his true potential and why he is one of the best third-round draft picks in Jacksonville Jaguar history. Number two, cornerback Aaron Beasley. The Jaguars drafted Aaron Beasley in the 1996 NFL draft in the third round. And Aaron Beasley had one year of six interceptions in 1999. Tag that along with two touchdowns. Now, I've never heard of this guy personally, but from the stats that he put up in, during his time in Jacksonville were legitimately good stats and seemed like he was a solid, solid lockdown corner for the 1990s Jaguar squad. Obviously, was a part of the team that took down John Elway in the playoffs, one of the most shocking wins in NFL playoff history where the Jaguars were able to knock off John Elway. He was also part of the Dan Marino retirement game. This guy is a really under-the-radar great Jaguar corner. He was around for four to five years in Jacksonville, and like I said, raked up six interceptions, which I do believe is tied for a franchise high. I think six is the franchise high for most interceptions in a season. It might be seven. Uh, correct me if I am wrong, but I think six is the mark. Jalen Ramsey has hit that number already in his second year. Uh, didn't hit it in his third year, but you know, Jalen Ramsey's obviously going to surpass him if he hasn't, you know, in your eyes already. But Aaron Beasley, definitely an all-time legend and one of the best Jaguar cornerbacks of all time. Again, I wasn't around to see him play, but, you know, looking at the stats, he definitely was a crucial piece to this Jaguar team and this Jaguar defense. And I hope this nostalgia kind of brings back some love to the older fans I kind of forgot about Aaron Beasley. Aaron Beasley comes in as the second best third-round draft pick of all time. Who's number one? Well, if it wasn't obvious, the best third-round selection in Jacksonville Jaguar history is defensive end Yannick Ngakwe. Now, Yannick Ngakwe is the best third-round pick in Jaguar history for a lot of reasons. This guy's only played in three seasons. He has 29 sacks. 29 sacks in three seasons. I believe that is second most uh, out of any three-player team, uh, three three-year player in the NFL, right behind Joey Boza, who I think has 30 or 31. So Yannick Ngakwe is not too far behind. He also has 10 forced fumbles, a ridiculous, ridiculous number. 70 quarterback hits, and he is just always, always after it. And this is a guy that is after a contract extension, and he's gonna have to get one this year. And you know, Demarcus Lawrence just got a big, big paycheck, and that's gonna set the bar high. For Yannick Ngakwe and the Jags are going to have to try and work something out. That's why I put the, the video out if you'd rather have Jalen Ramsey or Yannick Ngakwe long term. Because now that you've seen the contract that Demarcus Lawrence is getting, you kind of think to yourself, oh, maybe we will only have enough money for one or the other because we just paid Nick Foles. You know, we we literally just paid Nick Foles the, all that money and we're only going to have X amount of money to pay back, you know, Yannick Ngakwe and Jalen Ramsey, and the way that that's working out right now, I can see us picking one or the other, so it really comes down to which one is going to be more important to the team, and dare I say it, Yannick Ngakwe might be the most, the more important uh, player 
uh, than Jalen Ramsey, which I know is kind of a bold take. And I, I have a whole video about it. If you want to watch it, that's going to be uh, in the link down below. But Yannick Ngakwe is definitely a big part of this Jaguar team. He's the speed rush and opposite of Calais Campbell. They're a great pass rushing duo because they both bring something different to the table. Yannick Ngakwe's cross chop has been praised all around the league, last year is the only year in his career where he didn't rack up, or no, no, that was a lie, he did, he racked up nine and a half sacks last year, which uh, wasn't a double digit sack season, but I think he's going to be getting back on his horse and getting another double sack season this year to prove why he deserves the money that the Jaguars are going to end up having to pay him, and hopefully, 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 six around, because I want this guy to be remembered as one of the all-time Jacksonville greats, I want him in the uh, pride of the job waters because god damn it I love Yannick Ngakwe and he is without a doubt in my mind the best third round pick the Jacksonville job waters have ever hit on and it was Dave Caldwell so make sure you praise Mr. Dave Caldwell in the comment section down below and that was my top five best Jaguars third round picks of all time. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter at True Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.